Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday the 29th of December. It's good to be with you in the, this Christmas season. Our service this morning is taken from the book of alternative services, the service of morning prayer. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 18. I love you, Lord, O Lord of my strength, O Lord, my stronghold, my crag, and my haven, my God, my rock in whom I put my trust, my shield, the horn of my salvation, and my refuge, you are worthy of praise. I will call upon the Lord, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. The breakers of death roll over me, and the torrents of oblivion made me afraid. The cords of hell entangled me, and the snares of death were set for me. I call upon the Lord in my distress, and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice from his heavenly dwelling. My cry of anguish came to his ears. The earth reeled and rocked. The roots of the mountains shook. They reeled because of his anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils and a consuming fire out of his mouth. Hot burning coals blazed forth from him. He parted the heavens and came down with a storm cloud under his feet. He mounted on cherubim and flew. He swooped on the wings, wings of the wind. He wrapped darkness about him. He made dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered out of heaven. The, the Most High uttered his voice. He loosed his arrows and scattered them. He hurled thunderbolts and routed them. The beds of the sea were uncovered and the foundation of the world laid bare. At your battle cry, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high and grasped me. He drew me out of the great waters. He delivered me from my strong enemies and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into the open place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading is taken from the second letter of John, reading from verse 1 to 13. The elder, to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. I was overjoyed to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as if we have been commanded by the Father. But now, dear lady, I ask you, not as though I was writing you a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Let us love one another. And this love, that we walk according to the commandments, this is the commandment, just as you have heard it from the beginning. You must walk in it. Many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Be on your guard, so that you do not lose what he is we have worked for, but may receive a full reward. Everyone who does not abide in the teaching of Christ, but goes again beyond it, does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Do not receive into the house or welcome anyone who comes to you and does not bring this teaching. For to welcome is to, to participate in the evil deeds of such a person. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A gospel reading for this morning is taken from John chapter 2 and reading from verse 1 to 11. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servant who had, been draw had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus, Jesus did this, the first of his sons, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The key theme of John's three letters is love. The love of God for humanity, and our call to follow the commandment of Christ to love one another. The test of that love is to be found in the community of faith, the rub and reality of living out our faith together as an organic and dynamic community of faith that is called to grow into the full stature of Christ. In the case of the second letter of John, he is responding to an earlier issue in the church in Asia Minor, namely that those who denied the humanity of Jesus. One of the key issues that the early church had to deal with was what was, came to be known as Gnosticism, the idea that the divine Christ descended upon the human Christ at his baptism and separated from him prior to his death. It was a view that created this dualistic understanding of Jesus. It is clear from the second letter that this belief persisted in the church in Asia Minor, and John is careful to point it out. Many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And to indicate an appropriate response, any such person is a deceiver and the Antichrist. Why the doctrine of the Trinity and the doctrine of divine, uh, the divinity and humanity of Jesus so tied up in this commandment of love? Firstly, because in John's theology, the Trinity is a community of love between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. That community is defined love and defines love. The Trinity is the model of love and the intention of God in creating humanity in God's image that humanity would know that love initiated by God, i.e. love, and return it as love. And in addition, live in relationship with each other as neighbors in mutual love. Secondly, the incarnation only makes sense if we read it through the lens of love. True compassion is expressed in suffering with another. It literally means entering into the suffering of another as Christ did in the incarnation. If the divine Jesus only enters into the world of the human Jesus at his baptism and leaves before his passion or suffering, then the divine Jesus has truly failed to enter into our suffering and therefore failed to be compassionate. For John, Jesus entered into our suffering in the fullness of the Incarnation and, in doing so, brought us restoration to the fullness of life in the midst of our suffering. He entered into the fullness of our suffering in His Passion and overcame it in His Resurrection. In this sense, He embodied for us the fullness of love in our reality and, in response, calls us to embody the fullness of His Incarnation by embodying His love in our community and in the world. To walk in it as we follow Jesus step by step in faith as his disciples. For the readers of John's Gospel, the first miracle of Jesus, turning water into wine, precedes his baptism and is a sign of his divinity. It contains within it the symbolism of the use of water for ritual purification, a sign of baptism and repentance 
and turning in preparation for Christ. It then gets turned into wine, a sign of Christ offering himself for us in the Eucharist. In a sense, it is both a link between the ministry of John the Baptist in preparing the people to receive Jesus and a foreshadowing of the fullness of Christ offering himself for us in the Last Supper and the passion and the hour of his glory. As we journey through this Christmas season, we need to be reminded that the doctrine of the Incarnation, Christ born into the world, the divine entering our humanity and our suffering, has foundational importance to our faith. And simultaneously, foundational importance to how we live our faith as an echo of that love embodied in the Church through the centuries. Amen. We affirm our faith in Hero Israel. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is, is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Our response in the litany today is glorify your name. We pray for God's faithfulness to be known in the world. In a world of change and hope, of fear and adventure, faithful God, glorify your name. In human, human rebellion and obedience, in our seeking and our finding, faithful God, glorify your name. In the common life of our society, in prosperity and in need, faithful God, glorify your name. As your church proclaims your goodness in words and action, faithful God, glorify your name. Among our friends and in our homes, faithful God, glorify your name. In our times of joy, in our days of sorrow, faithful God, glorify your name. In our strength and our triumph, in our weaknesses and at our death, faithful God, glorify your name. In your saints in glory, and on the day of Christ's coming, faithful God, glorify your name. Almighty God, you have shed upon us the new light of your incarnate word. May this light enkindle in our hearts, shine forth in our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very, very much for joining us um, at the first recorded service for Trinity and St. Margaret's Barry. I do hope that you have had a blessed Christmas and, uh, and that as we anticipate this coming weekend and the new year, rather the new year, that you have a blessed new year as well. Please know that my thoughts and prayers are with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you now and forevermore. Amen.